family unity and blessing. We're going to look at that. It deprives family unity and blessing. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Turn there. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I want to pose a question as you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Is there strife, quarreling, and contention in your home? Is there strife, quarreling, which is fighting, and contention in your home? I just want to highlight a couple of things. I want to show you a couple of things where this strife and where this contention come from. There are several other scriptures that support this and gives us uh, the byproduct of this and, and the avenue by which it comes through. But I just want to give you a few. First of all, just write these, these scriptures down that I give you. First of all, Proverbs 15 and verse number 18, it says that an angry, jealous, or hot-tempered person always stirs up strife. Anybody who is jealous, anybody who is angry, just, just angry. Anybody who's jealous and angry, watch it, and hot temp, short temper, doesn't take much, short fuse. It doesn't take much to set them off. The Bible said that kind of person will always stir up strife. That, that's, who, that's who stirs up the strife right there. And, and remember when we talked about, a week before last, when we started talking about this, and I showed you in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6, and we looked at that long-suffering and forbearance. It was talking about having a long temper and not being short-tempered. But anybody who's short-tempered, Tempered. I mean, just, just, just fall off and get sideways over the smallest of things. Short tempered, hot temp, always mad. Everybody got to walk on eggshells when you in the house. We got to be careful about everything, everything we do and, and say in the house, certain move, just whatever, just, just stuff that don't even matter, but it matters to you because you got a bad temper. The Bible said that person stirs up the strife. Look, person that you say, mm, that's who doing it right there. Tell them, say, that's who doing it. That's who doing it right there. That's who doing it right there. That's who doing it right there. No, number two, just write this down. Uh, 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 Proverbs 16 and verse number 28, it says that a troublemaker or a person with evil intention stirs up strife. A troublemaker, somebody who always want to get in something. Always want to stir up some kind of trouble, want to stir up some kind of mess, just want to get something going. The Bible said those who have evil intention, if your intentions are evil, your intention is not to come over and have a good time, your intention is not, I mean, it looked like that on the outside, your intention is not to enjoy family time, your intention is not to, not to have good time, not to enjoy great fellowship, your intention is evil. And the Bible said when your intention is evil, before long, you're going to stir up something. Man, it's good stuff. And then it goes on to say, it says that a gossiper destroys relationship. The Bible also calls it a whisperer. Somebody who always whispers, somebody who always, always gossiping, always got to pull somebody in so you can say what needs to be said in the presence of everybody. Amen. Certain folk walk in, you, you whisper. <laughs> Girl, you see what they had on? You notice they ain't bring nothing. I'm, see, I'm sitting, I'm sitting right here. I got me a good seat right here where I can just kind of watch everybody who come in. And I'm, I'm seeing who bringing stuff and who ain't bringing nothing. And, and have, you, have you ever known? I just noticed this, you know, just through observation and discernment. <laughs> Look like the folk who bring the less eat the most. And just, just, watch, just w watch when her kids go around the table. We're just watching. Watch how, mu watch how much they get. That don't make no doggone sense. See, whispering. And here's what the Bible said. Uh, it destroys relationship. It destroys relationship. Destroys relationship. The strife comes from pride. Whenever you see a person in strife, always, the Bible says it's because they're full of pride. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 9 and 10, where there is strife, there's pride. Where there's pride, there's selfishness. And then watch this one. Proverbs 18, verse 6 and 7, it says the lips of a fool always bring strife. You know what a fool is. Fool say what he want to say, when he want to say it, when she want to say it. It don't matter who he is, it doesn't matter who it's about. Because they're a fool. And the Bible said that a fool always stirs up strife. And then Proverbs 10 and 12, it says that hatred stirs up strife. Anybody who walks in hate, 
The Bible said they will always stir up strife. Hatred, jealousy, foolishness is always looking for a place to stir up some strife. Amen. Amen. Let's look at verse number 10. Verse number 10 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. Here's what I'm after. And that there be, come on, no divisions among you. Here's that word division. It means splits, gaps, schisms, cliques. Split, no splits, no gaps, no schisms, no cliques. You see that? He said that there be no division among you, but that ye be what? Perfectly joined together. Say no divisions among us. No divisions Say perfectly joined together. Let me, get, let, me get, let me get 10 people over here. Just stand up. 10 people quickly. Just line up right across here facing the yard. Give me 10 people. Give me 10 people. 10 people right here. Give me 10 people on this side. Give me 10 people on this side. 10 people on this side. And, and face this way. 10 people. If we get more, that's fine. Just, just, give me, just give me some people. I want to illustrate something here. The Bible says, what? No divisions among us. But that we be what? Perfectly joined together. So let me get this side here. If I can get you guys to lock, lock elbows here. Now, they represent a family that is perfectly joined together, all right? Perfectly joined together. And when you're perfectly joined together, there is no divisions among you. We see no division. They are perfectly joined together. Now, this family here, if I can get you, Brother Howard, just kind of come over just a little bit, just stand right here. Now, if I can get all of you to just move down that way, get you to come over about right there, okay? Get, let me get you to just kind of stand up right here. Let me get you guys to lock elbows right here. You lock elbows. Go down some more. If I can get you to step out some, just come on out, yeah. And, and if, if I can get you to have a seat, please. You just have a seat, yeah, just have a seat. And you stand right there and kind of come. Let me get you guys to join right here. Okay, now. This is family too. But we see a lot of gaps and a lot of splits. And we even see some clicks. We see some folk join together. We see some folk ain't even participating with family. Now, which family is yours? Now, now forget about the entire, let's just go to the house. Which house is yours? Is, is this your house? Or is this your house? And see, when there, see, over here, there's no place I can get in and stir up stuff. That don't mean stuff won't come, but it can't get in. Because they perfectly join together. But over here, I can get in and stir up mess between these two. <laughs> Follow me? Over here, same thing. I mean, I can just, I can just run all through this family. <laughs> all kind of gas. They're not, they, now what? They're at the same function. They're in the same house, but they are disjointed. They have gaps. They got, they got schisms. They, they have splits in this family. They got cliques. In this family now for illustration purposes now watch this now this is a husband and a wife slide over a little bit more just two of them in the house and and, and this this how they live and you wonder why the devil keep getting in and, and not only the devil you wonder how Jody <laughs> come on not Joni Jody and, and Jody keep getting in because there's plenty room for Jody. And then when Jody get in, you don't know what side Jody going to now. But, but here's the question. How this even, now watch this. If they were perfectly joined together, he couldn't get in. He can come, but he can't get in. So again, so again, which, which one, which family represents 
your house. It's just you, your wife, and one child in the house. Do y'all look like this? Or do y'all look like this? It's the will. Now, this is the will of God. But the thing about this, this takes work. Because that doesn't mean he won't get his feelings hurt. But it means when he get his feelings hurt, he got to keep holding on to his family. Or he can get his little feelings hurt and then decide he going to let go and, and he ain't going to be divided. He going to be divided instead of being joined together with his family now. And that's what some of us are right now in our family. We, was, we, was, we, was, we were locked until yesterday. Something happened. Somebody said something. But you got to remember in family, some always going to come up. In your house, some always going to come up. She always, she always going to say something he may not like. But you got to make up your mind, we're going to stay joined together. Are you listening to me? So again, do you want to be here? Or do you want to be here? And unfortunately, too many Christians are here. And we cover it up with lifting our hands. We cover it up with a dance and with a shout. But then when we go home, we go to a house that looked like this. Thank you so much. Y'all can have your seats. Thank you. Come on, let's give all of them a hand clap of praise. All right, let, 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 me, let me hurry. Now, now, so let's talk about the creating a family unity. If we're going to create family unity, number one, we have to demonstrate love towards one another. We've got to demonstrate love towards one another. Number two, we must understand and appreciate the differences in one another. That means personality. That means emotions. It also means intuitions. Uh, I have to learn to appreciate the different. You're not like anybody else. Nobody else is like you. Everybody in your house is not like you. Everybody in your family is not like you. You can have 10 kids and they all be different. And you don't take those differences and use them to divide. But you got to learn to appreciate those differences. You and your spouse are not the same. And you don't want y'all to be the same. The worst thing we need is somebody else like you in the house. We need to be different. Amen? And so we got to use our differences not to compete or not to be criti criti critical of each other, but we got to use them to complement one another. Amen? Number three, we have to choose to value one another. We got to choose to value one another. Number four, we got to demonstrate commitment, care, and concern toward one another. If we're going to have unity in the family. Number five, we got to learn to accommodate for each other. How many of you got to make adjustments when you're in a house? Amen. When you're in a family. You got, you got to, you got to, that's some of you, you know, you got kids, you making all kind of adjustments. Why? Because that's what it takes to maintain unity in the family. You got to make a, you didn't plan on doing that. You didn't want to do that. You didn't think about doing that. But listen, in order to have unity, I got to make this accommodation. You got to make accommodations when you in a family. Number six, you got to spend time together as family. Spend time together as family. And then number seven, you got to choose to protect and forgive family. Let's look at Philippians chapter two. And verse number three, Philippians 2 and verse number three. The Living Bible reads like this. If they put it up, it says, don't be selfish. Say that to the person next to you. Don't be selfish. Say it again. Don't be selfish. Say it like you're not afraid of them. Don't be selfish. Say it like they're not going to meet you in the parking lot. Don't be <laughs> it says, don't be selfish. Don't live to make a good impression on others. So stop trying to impress people. Be considerate. Don't show up at the family function flossing and acting like you're the only one doing well. You ain't the only somebody doing well. That's not why God blesses you and prospers you and, and give you things in your life so you can go off and show off before your family. That's not why he does that. God wants you to be an example to your family that he can raise somebody up from your family. He says don't live to make a good impression on others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't just be about, don't just, don't just think about your own affairs, but be interested in others too and in what they are doing. You so busy talking about what you're doing, you can't even get a chance to hear what somebody else is doing. You so busy talking about what you got, you don't even get to hear what somebody else has. 
Why? Because you're trying to make an impression. You're trying to stand out. You're trying to make it look like you all this and that. But the Bible said don't do that. Watch this. Verse number five, he said, your attitude should be the kind that was shown to us by Jesus Christ. Jesus wasn't around there bragging. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm from glory. <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't how he was acting. Yeah, shoot, where I live, angels just flying around. That ain't, that ain't, how, that ain't how he was acting. <laughs> and look, go around your neck. We walk on gold in heaven. You know, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't acting like that. He wasn't acting like that. <laughs> No, he had an attitude where he was sent to serve everybody else. Amen. Let's go, let's go, to, let's go to Psalm 133. I got, I got to hurry. Psalm 133. I got to hurry. It's almost Thanksgiving. <laughs> Psalm 133. Here's what I want you to walk away with. That where there is no unity, there is the eliminating of the place where God commands blessing. There is a place in life where God commands blessing you don't have to chase blessing you don't have to beg for blessing you don't have to go after blessing there is a place in life where God will command blessing God will the Bible said God commanded the earth and it stood still and it says that God will command blessing and a lot of people are not experiencing family blessing because they're not in the place where God commands blessing. And that's a place of, you know, look at it in verse, verse number one, Psalms 133. Verse number one, it says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in what? Unity. See, dwell together in unity. He said, It is like the precious ornament upon the head that ran down, from, ran, ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went on down to the skirts or the collar of the garment, it says, as the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there, there, where's there? There's in verse number one, this place of unity. It says, for there the Lord, what? Commands the blessing and life, favor for your There's a place in life where God commands blessings and favor. And that place is the place of of unity and too many believers are trying to get in the in in the place where we can chase blessing and go after bless. we trying to work at being blessed we trying to work at having when we need to work at being unified and being in unity if we work at being in unity we won't have to concern ourselves about the blessing because God will command the blessing on my family. He'll command the blessing on your life. He'll command the blessing on those children. He'll command the blessing on mama, on daddy, on everything in this house. God will command the blessing. That's what the Bible said. But it's only in this place of unity. And look what we forfeit when we don't get in this place. We forfeit the blessing of God by not being in this place. Amen? Amen? So here's some things about this place. Number one, God works in an, at, in an atmosphere of unity. That's what God works. God don't work in chaos. Right. Amen. God will let you sit there and fight and fight and fight. God will let y'all fight 20 years. And when y'all finish fighting and decide y'all want to be unified, God will say, okay, I'll, I'll start commanding the blessing. Took me 20 years to do it. But if you got 20 years to fight, I got 20 years to wait. Look where you could have been if you can stop fighting. And that husband and wife, just, just fight, fighting over nothing. Number two, unity flows from the head downward. If that's going to be unity in the house, it got to be in the head. You can't have in the house what's not in the head. Amen. So that means it starts at the top. So whoever is top in the house, that's where it starts. And it flows down. And you can't expect to get on the family what's not in the head. Right. Number three, unity places you and your family under the umbrella of God's blessing. Unity. When you're, when you're unified, you don't have to be the smartest. 
You just got to be in unity. And folk will be wondering how y'all making it. They'll be wondering why y'all so blessed. Because we're in unity. We dwell in, we don't visit unity. We dwell in, we live there. We don't visit. We live there. Number five, in the place of unity, number four, in the place of unity, no foe can withstand God's blessing. They may not like you being blessed, but they can't stop you from being blessed. Number five, the family who lives in unity will live in the blessing. And number six, in the place of unity, nothing you imagine is restrained from you. See, in the place of unity, you can just dream and it happen. You can envision and it happen. You can imagine and it happen. I mean, you just think of stuff and it happen. When you're in the place of unity, it's automatic. Amen. Look at Genesis 11 and 6, our last scripture. Genesis 11 and 6, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. God says nothing will be restrained from them that they imagine. What does that mean? Whatever you can dream of, God can command it to happen for you if you stay in unity with your family. If you get that house unified, that house can be, your house, your house ought to be the most blessed house on your na- in your neighborhood. Jesus. Your home ought to be blessed. You got all that, you got, you got Holy Ghost, you got the Spirit of God, you got the anointing, you, you got all this stuff. And not walking in the blessing. Because you keep letting your flesh, your selfishness, and jealousy get in the way. And you cannot experience the commanded blessing. God say, I'll come. If you just get it, just get there. I'll command blessing. But I need you. I'm not going to put you there. You got to get there. And I'll command the blessing on your life. Look what the CV says it like this. He said, these people are working together. See that here? Working together. Are you and your, your spouse working together? Are you working together? It's amazing. Husband and wife work together on a wedding, but stop working together when they get married. These people are working together because they all speak the same language. Oh, I know when I read that. Listen, you and your house need to have one language, the language of faith. All right. All right. That's the language. That's the language of believers, the language of faith. That should be the language of your house, the language of faith. And he says they all speak the same language. Watch this. This is just the beginning. See, the language is just the beginning. Watch this. Soon they will be able to do anything they want. How many want to be there? Where you're able to do anything you want to do. Not where you just spend your life doing what you need to do, but you're able to spend your life doing what you want to do. Where it can happen for you, if you get out of that arguing, that bickering, that contention, and get over in the place of unity. Because in the place of unity, God starts commanding the blessing on your family and on your life. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. Now, I want you to make this confession after me. Now, before you start, y'all start, start moving and leaving, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray. I'm going to touch my wife and I. We just want to lay hands. We want to touch everybody in this room. Those who desire us to, we're just going to touch you on your shoulder lightly as you, as you pass by. We want to do that for two reasons, two things we want to do. Number one, we want to, as a point of contact, we want to add our faith with yours and come into agreement with you for everything that you'll believe in God for. Whatever you believe in God for, we want to lay our hands on you and just, just touch you and agree. The Bible says if two of us touch and agree as asking anything we ask, it shall be done. So we want to add our agreement with you. Secondly, we want to release a spirit of unity in your house. And so that's what we want to do. But first, let's, let's make this confession. And I want you to make this from your heart if you desire to. If you don't, that, that's fine too. But, but repeat after me. Heavenly Father. I ask that you would guide my actions so that my behavior reflects your kingdom. Give me an eagerness to be humble and gentle. Help me to have a heart of patience and forbearance. I choose to dwell in unity. Say it again. I choose to dwell in unity with those of my household. 
Father, my hope is in you. And I cancel all division. Say it again. I cancel all division. One more time. I cancel all division that arises within my family. Your word has renewed my mind. It has changed my heart and given me peace through your spirit. In Jesus' name, give him praise like you believe that. <clears throat> now, 